Hello, Kelly Lee here, professional genealogist at Root Pursuit. Today we are working on Sarah Ellen Hayes' uh, album. Here's the album cover, and here's, and just a reminder, that's a lovely picture of Sarah. It's an old tintype that is kind of disintegrating, but there she is, and this is the album we're working on, and today we're working on her 1860 census. So let's find out about Sarah in the 1860 census and the page layout, of course. So uh, I went to familysearch.org and I printed out a copy of the 1860 census where Sarah was living with her father, William Hayes, age 32. Um, her mother, Eliza, age 34. Um, Henry, age 11. William, age 6. Josiah, age 4. And Sarah, age 2. So, if you look at this, there's one interesting thing that we're trying to figure out, um, that I'm trying to figure out, is who is Henry? Because William and Eliza were born approximately a year before their son William was born, but Henry's 11. So Henry is five years older and born approximately four years before they were married. So there is a chance that William Hayes was married prior to, um, to marrying Eliza, or in fact, Henry is not, um, his son and perhaps just another family member. But generally they wouldn't have listed him at the top. They would have just put him down at the bottom um, as they did. I'm, there aren't any examples on this page, but all of a sudden you'll see somebody older at the bottom of the household. And it's maybe a servant or a farm labor or a, a cousin, nephew, niece, that sort of thing and even stepchildren. That was common in the 1880 census where they would list the, the stepchildren down below, even if they were like the, um, if they were the head of households um, biological child. So sort of interesting, but at any rate, it's, this document does not tell us which is which. So let's just see here. It says attended school. So Henry was attending school. Um, everybody was born in Kentucky. Their uh, value of personal prop. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Value of personal property. Value of real estate. So he has no real estate. So wherever he's farming, he's farming on somebody else's farm. So they likely have a house that they are renting or leasing. And then their value of personal property is only $500. So they were they were pretty poor. They weren't um, well-to-do. They were probably struggling a little bit and, and having just the basics. So, so but, he, but it does say that he was a farmer. So he likely farmed on um, a, brother's land or something along those lines another or perhaps a brother-in-law or something like that somebody related um, where it's the farm that he even maybe grew up on and but uh, he wasn't given the rights to other or it's split or something who knows so at any rate Here's here's the um, the census, and with this one, I did do the the hand tearing along the edges, and then I'm just going to distress the edges as well. So, all those. My fingers are going to get really brown from doing this. You can't just ink the paper, you gotta ink your fingers too. That's just how it works. I never used to do this, I was always, you know, that 
in the 90s and early 2000s I was a scrapbooker and everything was very clean and perfect and lined up and I don't know this new like distress thing is just I really like it sort of frame <laughs> although it does take quite a bit of time to, to do the distressing but not too long and it's not like a hard thing to do so it's still worth it and a little bit more edges and this is just how it printed so I have to figure out where I'm going to put this one and how I want to fold it so I could fold it into thirds this way I could fit in one of these pockets Actually, I think I'm going to fold it into thirds. Maybe this way. And then I can actually show you what's going on with this page as well, because um, I didn't do that yet. So let's do that. All right. So for this page, I have three pockets. This uh, pocket here. Here. There's a pocket here. This one's a little on the, on the weak side, but it's it goes in pretty far, as you can see. And then there's also this one. Not as far. So I'm thinking the best choice is gonna be this pocket. See how far I can get that in there. I may have to reinforce this with something, maybe something decorative. I, I made this as a little card um, to indicate this is a census document. Let me see where this goes in. This could stick out a little bit. I really don't want, I'm wondering if, I want that to be just a little bit narrower. So I'm going to tear off this and maybe that'll get us closer to the right height and then I'll re-ink this side okay. oh yeah this pocket is definitely a little on the wimpy side we're definitely gonna have to get something in there to strengthen that something that doesn't look too out of place like that that would look really out of place <laughs> let me see mm. it's not the worst i was thinking like a circle but i don't think that's the way we want to go <laughs> that could work. We're doing it. Now, when I ink this, I want to make sure that I'm getting the edge this direction so you don't see that white anymore. But also, um, I'm, I really wanted to come over onto that cream side to give it sort of a silhouette effect. Okay, there we go. And before I put that on there, I have to decide what I want to write on here. And I'm not I had used this color, but that's not the color I used. This. Maybe brown today. I've already got 1860. I've got census, so let's do. We're gonna do Somerset.
I'm going to just Okay. really shiny piece of okay hmm. let's see here okay that'll help reinforce this this goes down there so all right now back to this card so this card um i just found this page that had like what it's like to hunt a deer and then I found I have a buck stamp so that was cool and then on the back here there's an advertisement for cod liver oil with hypophosphates palatable as milk this codfish weighing 156 pounds was caught off the coast of Norway taken from life <laughs> So that was kind of cute little thing there. Uh, all right, so there's that. And then we still have another pocket here. And I'm hoping that this is gonna fit in there. But it looks like, hmm. Well, we're gonna fold it. So how are we gonna fold it? way then it's too tall. I guess we're gonna fold it like this. Okay so I have I really want to highlight but I don't want to do it in a way that's obnoxious. So I'm not gonna do like fluorescent or anything like that. So question is do I have any markers that are light enough I need to do a test on something. <laughs> All right. I want to do a test on something yellow. That wouldn't be helpful. Okay, here's a test. Okay, I can look at that. And hopefully it doesn't ruin my marker. The reason I like this um, sheet too is that, you know, if someone has trouble reading the original document, then actually I could highlight the original as well. A little highlight. Okay. And then I'm just going to do a little circle here. Very lightly. Oh, you can't even see that circle. Just showing that um, there are barren neighbors and eventually Sarah Ellen Hayes is going to marry someone by the name of Baron. But that's one thing I do not have a picture of is her husband, her future husband. feels weird me saying future because obviously <laughs> future from where we are in this project <laughs> all right let's do a little 
this page is just a little bit too white. <laughs> All right, a little too stark. still see our little tree and we can put this one in that's gonna give us problems hmm. maybe a little washi tape might be in there Got a little washi tape here I can use that piece So this is a little bit of reinforcement back there. There we go. All right. So now we've got our three items in our pockets telling us a little bit about the 1860 census. So we're all set there. I say 18, yeah, 1860 census. Okay, and I have this little piece that I did. It was just a little, I don't know, little crafty project. I have nothing that I have to put in here as of yet. Maybe I will find something. I haven't really decided, but it's kind of a little fun thing to do of a quilt. And this just says timeless. It was actually a calendar, as you can see, and then these little borders here. So not much to it. It was just a, a piece of two-sided paper folded over and create a little fold out. So that was pretty easy. Okay, uh, some other things you can add when you're doing census information. You can add in, uh, let's see, where do I have that? I made a little card that says neighbors on it. And of course, I can't really find it at the moment, but all right. Well, that should be it. Uh, you can always add in the neighbors, who the neighbors were, and then um, any other added information that you find uh, significant from the census. So, all right, if you are interested in seeing more of these videos, you can go to uh, and subscribe or just uh, check out the next one. I usually have them coming out every two days. If you are interested in getting more information about how I research my genealogy, you can go on over to root-pursuit.com. That's my website. And I will talk to you later.